Before this channel will be devoted to design, and in particular the analysis of architecture, I must close a chapter. Years ago, when my hair still looked like that of Justin Bieber in 2010, I created some videos on my bottle cap collection, in which I was trying to make the world of beer. Now a little bit older, and having a microphone that doesn't sound like a hamster being tortured, it's time to finish this project. In this video, I will discuss from each panel what my most unique or favorite cap is, and their history. If you're interested in seeing more statistics on each cap, this can be found in the link in the description. So while making the previous videos, I'd actually never mentioned that I'd already been collecting bottle caps since the age of 7. Now 23, the collection has grown a tremendous amount, especially since becoming a student. Get it goes! Although the world of beer was a great idea, it was a little bit too ambitious, especially when I didn't know how to dedicate myself to anything apart from playing League of Legends and sleeping. Now 588 caps and counting, it's time to finish this bloody project so I can get onto something a little bit more informative. To begin with the first cap, the North Korean cap. I'd already made a video about this one, and I secretly chose it because I'd already done the research for it, and the clickbait is just fantastic. I was definitely not going to miss this one. Especially after having seen Dermot Hudson, from which I got these lovely caps, on the documentary The Mole calling the BBC the British Bullshit Corporation. I'm sorry that Ulrich was such a little snitch. The first brewery in North Korea was created in 2000, when the ruling party decided to buy equipment from a bankrupt brewery in England. From this, the mystical Taedonggong beer was born, being served in pubs around North Korea. Although I doubt they have many pubs. The beer is apparently a bit like a British L, and has an alcohol content of 5%. You can actually buy the beer in China since 2016, but I haven't really looked into it, so a review is still pending. The New York Times and Stephen Evans did have opinions on the drink, however. The Times thought it was actually one of the best beers to come out of the Korean Peninsula, but Stephen was a bit mean and didn't like it, even comparing it to American dishwater beer. If I know one thing, Stephen, is that North Korea does not like to be compared to America. Little mean. The cap itself visualizes the Taedong Bridge, which spans the river the beer was named after. I assume that the writing on it says something like Taedong, but who knows. I also received the second type of cap, which has a lovely little cloud on it, but for the rest I have no clue what this one means, or if it's from a different company. It does, however, have an ISO code on it. When I was a little baby boy, I thought this meant that they were internationally recognized. Now that I'm almost ready for my pension, I know that this just means that they use an international standard, which is great when you do a lot of uh, exporting. All in all, a lovely cap, and I want to once again thank the UK-Korean Friendship Association for their help in getting these bottle caps to me. Going from one repetition to another, we have the Heineken cap. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but this one is simply amazing. I have never seen a silver Heineken cap, probably also because I would never drink this stuff, but I believe it is very unique. Heineke has been a family-run business since its very beginning. The family has been abducted, brewed like maniacs, and captured over 170 brands. Heineke showed the world that Dutch people can, apart from making cheese, riding bikes, and smoking the devilish cabbage, also do other things. The company was founded in 1864 by Gerard Heineke. He managed to fund his endeavors by pestering his rich mum, who would do anything for her cutie patootie. In 1873, the first original Heineken beer was brewed, and conquering the beer industry followed easily after. When Heineken was first launched, it managed to receive four huge awards, including the Grand Prix and a gold medal at the International Maritime Exhibition. It's funny, because Dutch people would refer to Heineken as ditch water, though you have to give it to them. If they can make an international empire on the back of ditch water, they've surpassed even Hawking's levels of genius. Heineken is a pale lager, has an alcohol content of 5% and is often one of the cheapest beers to buy, except for Tesco beer. Reviews of the beer, despite the ditch water banter, are decent, getting a 3 out of 5 to a 4 out of 5 on most review websites which is better than other famous lagers, <coughs> a butt light. The cap is incredibly unique, having no other pure silver and embossed design caps. I want to thank Heineken for sending it my way. Known for breaking teeth and being the entry drink for 12 year olds, Strongbow has been a staple of British culture for a very long time. Although I myself am not a large cider drinker, I have to give it to them. The cap they've created is absolutely stunning. 
two-toned with a beautifully illustrated apple, it has to be one of my favorite caps. The design almost makes you forget that it's the Chav's choice. The company was launched in 1960 when H.P. Bulmer named the drink after Richard de Clare, a knight who didn't believe in glorious melee combat and preferred being a little wuss shooting arrows from a distance. The drink is incredibly popular in England, Wales and Scotland, particularly the dark fruit flavor. All this demand has led to Strongbow having the largest alcohol vat in the world. I unfortunately couldn't find a picture of it, so please enjoy this beautiful drawing that represents how much that truly is. Like any drink that has ever existed, these days Strongbow is owned by the Heineken family. As you can imagine, the drink is quite sweet, but USA! USA! I thought that it wasn't sweet enough, so they added additional sugars to their variation of the drink. Personally, I don't find the cider to be particularly special. It's alright, it's kind of like the Budweiser of ciders, I'd say. Coming from a land from far, far away, we have the incredibly cool tiger cap from Singapore. Interestingly enough, there are no tigers left in Singapore, after the government created a side quest to get them all killed for money. The people from Singapore, like the true gamers they are, went for that 100% achievement score and were incredibly successful. The first beers were bottled in 1932. On their website the company has this intense video where the beer itself speaks to you. Like a rap battle straight out of 8 Mile, the beer claims that everyone believed making alcohol in Singapore was impossible. Yet here I am. Tiger is definitely the kind of brand to put bullshit motivational posts on LinkedIn just to get some internet validation points. To be fair, the branding is strong and the beer tastes really good. In the World Quality Selection competition, they even won a Gold Quality Award. Despite the beer being from Singapore, this company is also owned by Heineken. It was hard to find some information on this brand, but the cap is lovely, so there's that. Lastly, we have a cap that looks like it came straight out of Woodstock 1969, named after a character from a Greek play that didn't remember killing someone because he got too drunk. It is quite a unique brand and cap. The brand was founded by four friends in 2012, after they'd spent a good weekend at Lowlands, one of the Netherlands' largest festivals. The first beer was Monoliefde, meaning man love. It was very unique, a beer that perfectly fits its origins. Amsterdam. Worst news is that Heineken has also bought a small stake in this company in 2019. If things continue like this, the whole world will soon be owned by Heineken. They now have a collection of 13 beers, which all have funky designs. And their factory serves as a bar on Fridays and Saturdays, which is something that I must go and inspect when I create a video on the architecture of Amsterdam. Now that I've finally checked this to-do off my list, I can start with the real project on this channel. From now on, this channel will be dedicated to the analysis of architecture. Subscribe for the next video where I will talk about one of the most influential architects of our era who got killed in the most tragic of ways. You can stalk my personal life and my professional life in my on my Instagram and LinkedIn in the description below. And I want to thank you for watching and have a lovely day.